Kennedy Center uh, told me that I was going to receive this honor last March. And that gave me plenty of time to reread the collected works of Mark Twain. <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> but I, d I did read the wit and wisdom of Mark Twain on the plane ride down yesterday. <laughs> And just leafing through the first few pages, you can tell that he's a really good writer. <laughs> Other than the fact that I work or have worked with some of the best comedy writers of this time, I, I couldn't think of any reason I should receive this award. And then I thought of Huckleberry Finn, which I read as a boy and, and as a young man, and again a few years ago. And I realized that SNL has always been stuck in adolescence. That time of life when you first begin to question authority, declare your independence, a time of risk and adventure, and occasionally bad behavior. <laughs> and as I sat in my box tonight, looking at everyone during the show, and I realized how much I love watching people perform. We did a show, <coughs> excuse me, we did a show uh, last Saturday night in New York, and we'll do a show this Saturday night as well. And last weekend, in the final production meeting, just before we went on the air, I looked around the room and saw all the writers and the cast, the director, the designers, the musicians, my fellow producers, and all of the production staff. And I thought, they have all worked so hard and so long this week, and, I'm, and are about to go out there and give everything they have for this week's show. And yet I'm the one getting on the plane tomorrow with my tuxedo and heading to Washington to be honored. And I thought, yes, that's the way it should be. <laughs> when it comes to being honored, I, I work alone. For the last 30 years, I've had the coolest job in New York City, and I've been lucky to have been surrounded by so many talented people. There's no way I can declare my gratitude to all of them, and to those I worked with in the past, and those I will see in the studio tomorrow. I can't possibly thank everyone who performed here tonight, but they are my friends, and I know that nothing will mean as much to them as thanking them individually with a personal phone call in the next week or two, <laughs> or at least having an assistant leave word. <laughs> I, I think the hardest thing for me to do after so many years of working around a comedy show is to try and be sincere, but let me start. <laughs> I do want to thank the Kennedy Center and PBS for honoring SNL and all the people who've worked on it over the years. I want to thank NBC, who from the very beginning has supported this show through good times and bad. And in particular, uh, Bob and Suzanne Wright, who are here tonight and who've always seemed to be there when you need them. I want to thank my friends who showed up tonight to perform and make this night so special. I realize there are some things you just can't get out of. I told you it'd be hard, it'd be hard to be sincere. And most importantly, I want to thank my family, my wife Alice, my children, Henry, Eddie, Sophie, to whom uh, I get to share this, and because they are the most and best thing that ever happened to me. 29 years ago, when I was planning the very first show of Saturday Night Live, I was so focused on how we would begin the show that I didn't really pay much attention to how the show would end. I'm not very good at ending things. It turns out that the only thing that has remained the same over the years at SNL is the good nights. The host thanking the musical guests, the cast milling around the stage while credits roll. And I can't think of any better way to end this show than to have all of the cast of SNL who are here tonight <laughs> join the performers on stage.
Bye-bye.